Bye. Hi, I'm Lisa. This is Threshold in China, a segment that gives you a taste of the future before it actually happens. I'm going to talk about emerging technologies that have life-changing potentials and assess their ability to influence our life in the near future. Imagine one day you're sunbathing on a beach, but instead of getting a suntan, you turn green like Hulk. So does everyone else around you. And this is the latest anti-aging treatment. Today, I'm going to show you this new green technology, greener than anything you have seen before. Basically, it turns the human body into a plant that can get its energy by photosynthesis. A group of scientists from China's Zhejiang University, led by Professor Fan Shunwu, have successfully extracted a photosynthetic biological battery telecoid from spinach. I'll talk about this later. They basically injected this stuff into the cartilage of aging mice and cured their osteoarthritis, which is the wearing down of joint cartilage. Now let's take a look at how it works. One of the reasons why we age is a cell in our body can't make enough new stuff and replace the old and dysfunctional ones. Normally, the cells can synthesize proteins and function as enzymes or building blocks of cells. But as we grow old, the cells in our body gradually lose their energy and to get them to work, they need to be recharged like batteries. That's what happens to animal cells. Plant cells, on the other hand, can produce energy and oxygen by photosynthesis. What it takes are just sunlight, water and carbon dioxide. What if the animal cells can do the same? First, the team has to acquire photosynthetic system from the plants, and they choose spinach as the source, allegedly inspired by the cartoon figure Poppy the Sailor, who gains superpower after eating a can of spinach. In spinach, as well as in other green plants, photosynthesis happens in a kind of tiny sacs in their cells, the telecoids, in which Greek literally means sac-like. It is the pigment contained in telecoid that makes the plant green. The telecoid is now a potential biological battery that can recharge the cells. But how to inject this into a mouse cell? Well, they first turn the telecoid into a much smaller nanotelecoid unit. But getting smaller is not enough. You can't just inject alien stuff into animals and hope it will work. The immune system of the animal and human will discover and try to destroy any foreign implants. This is normally done by macrophage, a type of immune cells. Even if the injected material can evade the macrophages and get inside the cell, they are likely to be caught by lysosome, a sphere-shaped sac that contains enzymes and break down foreign objects. So Fan's team has to find a way to smuggle the nanotelecoids unit into mouse cells without triggering the immune response. Their strategy is to coat the nanotelecoid unit with mouse cell membrane so as to trick the cells into seeing them as their own. When the cells in our body need to take in substance from extracellular space, the substance are encapsulated in cell membrane to form a vesicle, which can then safely travel within the cell without being destroyed. Therefore, fans team considered using a specific mature cell membrane as a camouflage to invade elimination. What they have to do is to make sure packing all the telecoid protein needed for photosynthesis and keep them intact during the transportation. As I mentioned before, the nanotelecoid unit are injected into the knee cell of 12-week-old mice with osteoarthritis. Once the proteins are shipped and unpacked within the mouse cells, the scientists put them to work by exposing the mouse to red light for 30 minutes. The light penetrates beneath the mouse skin and switch on the proteins of telecoids in the cells, kicking off the photosynthesis. Chemical storing energy are produced in this process, and in less than two hours, the level of energy chemicals were restored to a healthy level. The energy released in these chemicals provided a shoot in the arm for the aging cells and boost their anabolism. As a result, the overall condition of the cells was significantly improved. To evaluate the improvement of osteoarthritis, FANS team used the well-established ORIS grading system. The grades range from 0, that is perfectly healthy, to 5, which is really bad. The mice were rated at a 5 before the treatment, and their grades has improved to 1.5 after the treatment. Taking a closer look, FANS and colleagues found that the cartilage cells receiving telecoid injections had regained their youth. The level of improvement is equivalent to a 60-year-old human turning to the age of 20. After this, the team repeated the experiments on human cartilage cells cultured on Petri dish. The cells were obtained from patients with osteoarthritis undergoing total knee replacement. 
Applying the procedure on human patients in clinical trial would be the next step. Fan's team is optimistic about the wider application of this technology beyond treating osteoarthritis. The team has filed several related patents and currently focused themselves on converting the technology to products. And according to Fan, the membrane coating technology of nanoparticles has a good potential of mass production. So, how good is it according to the standards of threshold rating? We rate these emerging technologies on a 1 to 5 scale across three dimensions readiness, novelty, and potential impact, or rippleness as I call it. If a technology scores a 3 or above in all three dimensions, it reaches the threshold of potentially having a real world substantial influence. The readiness category refers to the maturity of a technology, from lab demonstration to mass production. The novelty score refers to how new the innovation is. 1 means a small differentiation to existing tech, and 5 means the innovation fulfills a new function. Finally, the ripple scale is our opinion on a technology's potential of life-changing impacts and how widely it can be applied elsewhere. How does this telecoid transplanting technology stack up? In the readiness category, it is a 3. The technology involved are relatively mature, making nanoparticles are a common practice in pharmaceutical industries nowadays. Membrane coating could be harder, but the team has mastered the technology and paved the way for mass production. On the other hand, there are still many regulatories and procedural hurdles associated with human testing which must be overcome to turn this into a real product, especially since it hasn't been tested on living patients. Moving on to novelty, Reversing aging process by transplanting telecoids make human cells produce their own energy is certainly an innovative and bold idea. Therefore, we see a 4. And finally, the ripples rating. If the technology could fulfill the promise of turning back the clock for so many people, it could definitely change our lives. However, even though they have succeeded in treating osteoarthritis, they still have to demonstrate the application of this new technique on other conditions related to aging. So for the time being, it is a 3, and that meets the threshold of real-world influence. After all, immortality is a great temptation for most people. The potentially game-changing benefits of this innovation to the elderly and those with joint problems are obvious, but what I'm excited about is the potential implications of cellular regeneration technology for societies with aging demographies. Aging is a worldwide problem and one that each of us will face in the future. According to the WHO, by 2030, roughly 1.4 billion people will be 60 years old or older. By 2050, that number will rise to 2.1 billion. Once it becomes more mature and more applicable to other elements, cellular regeneration technologies, can, such as the one that Professor Fan are working on, have the potential not only to radically improve elderly individuals' qualities of life, but also gave them, or future us, the opportunities for prolonged health. Moreover, it can also be a preventative treatment. Of course, this all assumes that it matures and becomes more widely accessible. In aging societies with shrinking workforces, this can potentially boost their economy. This technology might even bring the superhumans from the big screens to reality. And those are just a few of the possibilities that this technology may bring to us. There are many other possibilities in which we look forward to your thoughts on how to apply this technology. In the meantime, eat your vegetables.